third prepared speech is from a woman who loves whale watching, particularly from her own dinghy. It's also a number nine speech, five to seven minutes, intended to persuade the power, entitled, You Don't Know What You Have Until It's Gone, or They Paved Paradise and Put in a Parking Lot, Dame Kathy Lee. are pretty idyllic, as though all is well in the whaling world. But you have to hear the truth. Whale populations are dramatically declining, and the major factor is commercial whaling. The gray whale has been hunted almost to extinction twice, in 1880 and in 1920. By 1986, there was such a public outcry that a, a 10-year moratorium on international whaling was Im imposed. But despite the last 40 years of almost perfect protection, blue whales of the Antarctic are still at less than 1% of their original abundance. There are fewer than 100 gray, gray whales left in the Pacific. Within a year after the international moratorium was imposed, Japan resumed its killing. In fact, every year since then, the Japanese has increased its quotas. It even kills whales within the International Whaling Preserves of Antarctica. Last year, Japan truly tested world conservationists because it added another 410 minkies, 50 fin whales, and 50 humpback whales to its Antarctic kill program. 33 other com countries are now willing to vote with Japan to resume commercial whaling in exchange for their foreign aid. If you've wondered whether the hunted whale suffers, the answer is there is no humane way to kill a whale. Whales are enormous, they're sentient, they're intelligent creatures, and every single one of them suffers an agonizingly slow and painful death. Japan continues its to kill its kill programs despite the fact that there's no real demand for whale meat in Japan. In fact, there's an excess of whale meat. To reduce its stockpile of surpluses, the government 
has subsidized programs that add whale meat to its school lunches and pet food. Since 1986, a lot of countries have decided that whaling is not profitable and they, uh, because petroleum and plastic products have replaced what whales used to give us, um, and they have declared locally their opposition to, to the violations. But the United States has remained strangely silent. Recently, however, the United States Humane Society has asked the Secretary of Commerce, Carlos Gutierrez, to enforce uh, the Capellas Amendment, which is the one law that could be used to combat rogue whaling. It allows the President to first certify country and then impose trade, trade sanctions. To date, Japan's been certified three times, in 88, 95, and 2000, and yet no U.S. President has imposed a trade sanction against them. Kitty Block, uh, the director of the Treaty Law of Oceans and Wildlife Protection, urges us to, to take strong action now to show Japan that the American public will not sit idly by while whales are brutally slaughtered. Whaling is not the only threat to whales. Whales are also threatened by global climate changes, pollution, being caught in fishing nets, ozone depletion, overfishing, ship, ship strikes, and even noise. In the year 2000, four different whale species, species beached themselves in the Bahamas after the Navy used active sonar. Active sonar can reach 245 decibels and it's the equivalent of launching a Saturn V, rock, uh, Saturn v rocket underwater. And investigators later found out that the brains and ears of the whales have been hemorrhaging. the endangerment of whales. Doesn't that make us responsible? If you're asking what you can do, here's some suggestions. You could write to Secretary of Commerce, Gutierrez, and ask him to certify Japan and impose trade sanctions. Maybe it's the last hope for ending the senseless killing of whales. You can monitor the water quality of local watersheds. You can adopt a beach. You could watch for yourself whether any of the paint, pesticides, litter, Pet waste, copper that you use is going down storm drains and into the oceans. You can help stencil storm drains so that the public is aware of where their water is going. You can create and support whale sanctuaries, places of refuge where whale populations can breathe and feed and recover from the years of exploitation. Those sanctuaries actually inspire whale watching, and whale watching is the only truly sustainable economic form of activity involving whales. are gone, will videos like these be enough to fill their void? Do you care?